the algorithm? So before we dive into the different bits of Parsec, let's just kind of cover very high level what we do. Uh, so one thing is we use the gossip protocol to communicate amongst nodes in a section. Uh, and while we do this, every node keeps a record of everything it's been communicated. Um, then, uh, so, so this record we call the gossip graph and it contains each uh, thing that happened in the network and each communications that happened and in which order they happened. Um, so it kind of seems disordered if you just look at it from far away, but then the point of Parsec is from this kind of disordered number of, say this node communicated to this one, this node communicated to this one, we end up uh, picking every observation that's been made and agreeing on an order. So each node only looks at the graph they constructed, which is not necessarily the same as the one someone else constructed, but which tends towards the same thing. And uh, they decide an order, and we can prove that when they decide this order, some other node with their own graph will actually decide on the same order. And so that's Parsec, just to give you a very high level overview. Uh, so Bart is going to explain gossip. Uh, I'll explain, at least to give you a quick rundown about uh, gossip and related things. So yeah, so basically gossip is not just a word we use uh, for, for a joke. It's actually, uh, yeah, it's actually a well-established term for, for the class of protocols, uh, which basically, t uh, well, they come down to uh, every node picking uh, the partner for exchanging data at random. So basically the nodes periodically randomly pick some partner to exchange the latest data uh, or gossip. And, and this way the information spreads across the network. So it is a nice trade-off between resiliency and uh, efficiency because, for example, we can have a very resilient way of communicating but not very efficient, which is just broadcasting to everyone. So everybody that has something to say sends it to every everyone else, which gives us n-squared message complexity. Or we can have a very efficient but not very resilient way uh, of communicating in which we can imagine nodes in the network sitting in a circle and everybody that has some, some piece of information just passes it to the guy on the right. But then if some guy just decides to randomly drop out and said, okay, I'm not participating anymore, then the information stops spreading and everything, everything breaks. So yeah, so basically the gossip is a nice trade-off. We don't send to everyone, but at the same time we ensure that just random, a random guy stop, uh, stopping to cooperate won't break everything because we still will be communicating at random to some other, uh, other people and the information will be spreading regardless. Uh, yeah, so, but gossip uh, ensures that we can spread information, but it can't ensure that we actually know that we are spreading correct information. And uh, we actually can't really ensure that we will not have any false information at all in the network. But what we can ensure is at least assign the information that we are spreading to its author. And we are doing that using digital signatures. So basically everybody that uh, is going to spread a piece of, uh, some, some piece of information is supposed to digitally sign it. And then basically when I pass it along to somebody else, if they tell me, hey, you, you basically gave me wrong data, you can say, hey, but it's not me, this guy gave it to me and it's, it has his signature, so, I, so I'm telling the truth, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, so this is what we use digital signatures for. So uh, yeah, so let's say, uh, let's, uh, as to the structure of the gossip. So what we are doing exactly in, uh, in, in b with gossiping, uh, we are gossiping uh, things that we call gossip events. And basically every event has uh, some data inside it. So let's quickly go through this data. So first it has its creator, which is verifiable because it also has the signature by this creator. So we can, when we know the creator, we know, he, we know their public key, so we can verify the signature and see if it fits. If it fits, then, well, this guy must have created this gossip event. Every gossip event also has two parents, the self-parent and the other parent. Well, they are, have them optionally. They don't always have them. For example, when I just joined the network, I don't really have any events that I could assign as parents, so my first event won't have any parents at all. So both of those fields will be empty. But every other event has a self-parent, which is another, cr another event created by me earlier, which basically creates a linear history for every node in the network. And, uh, well, uh, if, if I created an event as a result of, an, of observing an event happening in the network, then it usually won't, then it won't have the other parent, because, uh, well, 
what should be the other parent. There is no, no reasonable choice for this. So I just assign it to, as a self-parent the previous event that I created, and that's all. But we also create new gossip events as a result of receiving gossip from somebody else. And at this point, we actually assign the other parent, and the other parent is the latest event by our uh, created by our gossip partner that we, that we are receiving from them. So this way, we will create a sort of uh, history in the graph, but Pierre will talk about it a bit more in detail. And the last part is something we call an observation, which basically is the payload of, of the event. It can contain, uh, here it contains optionally a vote, but it can contain, uh, in general, any information that we want to get consensus on. Uh, okay, and yeah, so now Pierre will talk a bit more about what is the gossip graph and what it looks like. So basically, the gossip graph is the data structure that you construct, and it's just a number of gossip events. So here, we are giving a name to four computers. We're going to call them Alice, Bob, Carol, and Dave, because it's easy to refer to them that way. Um, and we are going to see what would happen if they were communicating. Uh, so this is not a network starting from scratch. So you can assume that some communications happened before, and like right now, we are just hiding everything, and we are going to take an ongoing uh, communication in the network and see what happens. So say Bob observes something. So something could be, for instance, someone wants to join the network. So for instance, Frank would like to join Alice, Bob, Carol, and Dave. Uh, and so he's going to ask to enter, and then they have to reach consensus to let him in. Also, if Frank and Eric are both trying to enter around the same time, they need to agree who enters first. Because then, like, if they don't, for instance, uh, it could be different people voting for the next joiner or something like that, and that could cause problems. Uh, so let's say Bob observes that uh, Frank wants to join the network. So Bob creates a gossip event locally that contains an observation that Frank wants to join the network. And so this uh, gossip event will have a self-parent, which is the last event from Bob, which we don't see in this graph. Uh, but no other parent, because that wasn't communicated to him. And then say that Bob randomly picks Carol for gossip. And so he tells her everything he, everything he knows that he, knows, he doesn't know she knows. Uh, and so uh, Carol records this by creating a gossip event with her latest event as self-parent and Bob's latest event as other parent. So that records the communication. And then say randomly, because people kind of pick other or nodes pick other nodes randomly. So now Bob happens to pick Alice. Uh, no reason why it's Bob twice, just that's what happened. So Alice records the communication in the same way. Um, and then say ha Alice happens to be picking Bob for gossip now. Bob records this, and it creates this event and so on and so forth, so nodes just keep communicating to each other. I'll just raise your attention on this one, because uh, this one is a bit more interesting, because before this, Carol communicated to Bob, but now you can see that Bob is communi communicating to Carol and the path cross. So what this means is that Carol started sending the message about at the same time when Bob sent his message, and then they both received it uh, not sequentially. So that's a consequence of asynchrony. It's completely valid gossip. So you can have this in graph. It's just uh, something that can happen. And now I'll just keep gossiping a little bit to build a bit more of a, of a graph, because we're going to use this for illustrations of concepts later. So let's just uh, finish what fits in the slide. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and then one thing we can do just for us, because we are going to present concepts based on this is give names to each event. Uh, so here we just name them A0, A1, A2, B0, B1, B2, etc. just so we can refer to them uh, for future explanations. Uh, and the first concept we are going to define is scene, and Bart will do that. 